morning folks, just watching some skateboard videos. This is the one from our assignment. Wow. How scary would that be, eh? Ooh. That is quite the accomplishment, eh? Holy smokes. Wow. Wow. That is something else. 25.5 feet. Was that 7.7 .7 meters? Good morning. Yeah, I just wanted to watch that. Danny Way is one of my heroes, I have to say. Um, there's a really good documentary out there about Danny Way um, called Waiting for Lightning. Um, the, just a, a documentary about um, uh, one of his big jumps. He did. Uh, he did. Uh, he, he 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 made a, a ramp that went over the um, the Wall of China. The great, the great wall. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty crazy uh, skateboarder. Um, really dedicated to um, his sport, and um, yeah, he's he's an inspiration to uh, to a lot of people. Really, uh, really dedicated person. He's been through a lot of injuries. Um, he's been paralyzed, if you can believe it. Uh, he was surfing and he fell off and. Uh, went head first into uh, the sand and he was paralyzed for like six months and then regained uh, the ability to move and then like he's back at it like it he really really crazy uh, crazy guy uh, has been through probably more injuries than any other kind of um, uh, you know uh, athlete that that I can imagine um, like I say yeah he's been uh, paralyzed his knees and ankles are just, uh, they're basically just a big ball of cartilage because of all the, the, the ridiculous injuries that he's, he's put himself through. But he always gets up um, and, uh, and picks himself up and uh, goes back at it. Um, maybe, maybe later I'll, I'll show you a, uh, a quick video of, um, of Danny Way um, injuring himself and then getting up and then... Uh, uh, and then and trying trying it again. It's 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 quite inspirational to to watch. Anyway, um, I thought I'd uh, go over um, a couple of um, things today. Let me just um, okay. We just got six people so far, but um, do I know when classes are supposed to be finished? Yes, I do. Uh, June nineteenth is our last day of classes um, I mean of course everything is subject to change I I got an email about uh, six minutes ago um, saying that the report card times are gonna be a little bit different um, yeah so yeah uh, I haven't had a, a chance to, to read this yet but I think um, Report cards are going to be distributed a little bit later than we originally anticipated. Uh, oh, excuse me. I think um, I think they were originally supposed to be. Uh, um, let's see here. I think yeah, going back here. I think that they were originally supposed to be distributed on June twenty second, but now that's been pushed back to June twenty sixth. So I mean. I'm trying to say is um, uh, yeah we uh, like things are changing so uh, as far as I know as it current currently stands our last day of class is June 19th um, but that last week is like you will not be learning anything new um, like what what I'm gonna talk about today is is pretty much just gonna be the the very last new thing 
that we're gonna look at this year and then um, after today's class we'll be doing just kind of more review looking back at our year and all the stuff that we learned throughout the year and that kind of thing um, so yeah our last class as it stands right now is June 19th honestly I would be surprised if that were to change uh, you know a lot of things have been changing I would be surprised if our last day changed but you never know um, anyway uh, yeah, so I um, I marked your assignments. Overall, I was very impressed with, with everyone's work. Um, uh, please let me know if you can't access the um, the annotations that I, I, uh, I made. So, oh, excuse me, pardon me. If, um, if, you, uh, if, if you can't see like the, the notes that I left for you and that kind of thing, uh, let me know. Um, I know that in the past, in the, I think one or two students had a difficult time um, seeing the uh, the comments that I made because uh, I, I just write them down with my, my iPad and uh, uh, that seems to be the best way for me to mark. Uh, I, 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 but uh, yeah, if you can't access uh, those comments, let me know and I'll see what I can do. Um, I know that a few students have submitted their assignment late, which is fine, that's okay, um, uh, but just please be aware that um, right now I'm marking my grade 11 assignments, um, and that's my priority now, so uh, I'm gonna, it, it's gonna have to wait, so you'll have to, uh, you'll have to just uh, hold tight, um, and uh, I will, uh, I will mark your assignment uh, uh, when I'm finished the grade 11 assignments. And I just turn my volume down. Okay, um, so uh, there's there's two things that I want to to talk about today. Um, uh, yeah, so one is something that I, I think that we we already kind of uh, uh, have uh, an idea of, um, and then the next one is something that uh, I think I think is fairly interesting. So. Um, uh, yeah, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, how about instead of me just talking about it, why don't we just take a look at it? So um, the first one is the factor theorem. Factor theorem. And I think that this one is useful because it speaks to something that we already kind of know about, but I think it's, I think it's useful to, uh, to just have it written down so that we actually um, know about it. So uh, let's say that we have so let f of x be a polynomial of degree n, not degree, degree n. So in other words, f of x looks something like this. Uh, so I've got um, the coefficient on x to the n is a n plus a n minus one x to the n or n minus one that is plus dot 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 plus and then we'll have I don't know a one x plus a naught. <clears throat> okay, so that's what our polynomial is. That's just a general form of a polynomial. So let's say that we've got this polynomial. It follows that um, I should say then um, f of c is equal to zero if and only if x minus c is a factor of f of x. So what does that mean? Um, well, this this core this this is basically what we're doing. Um, so like this is the general idea. Is the general idea idea behind us factoring quadratics is the the general idea be, behind us factoring quadratics behind factoring quadratics in order to find x intercepts Okay, so uh, just like we could have, um, like if if f of x was equal to, 
oh, here I should say example. So E, E, G, if F of X is equal to, you know, X minus two times X plus three, then the X intercepts are X equals two and X equals negative three, right? So what that means, so this means f of 2 is equal to 0 and f of negative 3 is equal to 0. That's what that means. Okay, so this is just kind of like the general uh, idea behind something that we already know, but it's, it's been generalized for polynomials of degree n. Okay, now keep in mind, I'm not going to be throwing like huge polynomials at you. Um, I, like really what the, like the purpose of, of this exercise is just to sort of take a look at something that we already know and generalize it. Okay. So that's, that's, that's kind of what we're doing. We're kind of just sort of looking at the big picture here. Um, so don't, don't, please don't feel overwhelmed by like, by this big, huge polynomial here. This is just saying, okay, it doesn't matter if it's a quadratic or if it's a degree three polynomial or degree four or five or what have you. What we were doing when we were factoring quadratics to find those two x-intercepts, that is true for any polynomial. And we saw this earlier when we looked at, I think not the last class, but the, um, yeah, this one over here, right? When we looked at, at, at this, this um, degree three polynomial and we, we wrote it just as its factors, well, we saw that this one has, um, X intercepts at those points, negative three, positive two, and positive four, right? So we've already seen this uh, a little bit, right? Now, there's, there's one more thing that I, I want to talk about, and that is just what happens when um, one of your factors uh, isn't, uh, you know, of this form, isn't of this form. So I just want to just write a couple of things and then and then that's pretty much it for our course. This is basically the last big idea in, in our course. And this is not really something that, um, you know, I'll, uh, uh, you know, it, it, I'm trying to explain what I'm, 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 I'm thinking here. Just like this isn't your typical sort of high school type of question. This is kind of like a, a grade 10 advanced, very specialized idea that's that's just on the grade 10 advanced curriculum. So um, I'm, I'm just sort of going to explain it to you. And then um, I might ask on just one very short assignment next week. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking of having just one more assignment. That's just maybe two or three questions just, just to sort of like have a little cherry on top, like last sort of last hurrah, um, not a challenging assignment. Um, or I shouldn't say not challenging, but, but not a long assignment, not an assignment that's intended to take very much time. So just two or three questions. Uh, and I might ask a question like this um, on that assignment, just to sort of see, see if you kind of are, are, have been following along and, and that kind of thing. So here's, here's the big idea here. Um, so the idea is the following. So um, let's see here, how do I, how do I phrase this? So, um, so let's recall, not all quadratics, so not all quadratics um, have x-intercepts, right? So, uh, you know, you could have a parabola, for example, that looks something like this, put a boom, put a bang, okay, and you'll notice no x-intercepts, right? They don't all have x-intercepts, right? And and that that really corresponds to a, a parabola that is that d just doesn't cross that x-axis, right? It's either above it and pointing up, or below it and pointing down, right? So there's there's an infinite number of these guys. You could have them over here. You could have have them like over here, long and skinny. You could have them like really like wide, like this. Um, there's all sorts of parabolas that you could have that have no x-intercepts, okay? So let's just talk about a few things that, um, uh, that we can say about these. So if a quadratic has no x 
intercepts, we can say, well, we can say several things. First of all, we could say um, that uh, the parabola does not pass, P-A-S-S, -S, does not pass the x-axis, right? That's, that's the visual way of interpreting it. Um, another way that we could say it is does not factor, right? The, we cannot factor those, uh, those guys. Another way of saying it is that we, we have a negative discriminant. Right? So yeah, uh, I think that those are the, the main ways that we've, we've looked at it so far. So it turns out that there, we, we, we have a special term for this. So we have a special term for these kinds, not this, these. We have a special term for these types of quadratics. They are called, I'll put it in all capitals, irreducible quadratics. Hmm, cool. So we see that they are irreducible. Uh, and the reason why we call it irreducible is because the whole idea of being, of reducing, uh, kind of corresponds to factoring. Okay, so we cannot factor those. That's that's where the word comes from. It's irreducible because we cannot reduce it into linear factors. Okay, so these turn out to be very important quadratics. I'll tell you why. There, I would say that these quadratics are just as important as linear functions, and and I think that we can see that linear functions are extremely important. They're they're very very important functions. I mean, think about how important linear functions are. I mean, first of all, they make up lines. And how foundational are lines? Like, lines make up everything, right? And not only that, but we've, we've seen all of these, um, these uh, like, this is a degree four polynomial, and we've, we've reduced it into its linear factors, right? It's linear factors. Now, We've seen something. We've seen that we can take a big, huge polynomial that has many, many uh, uh, terms and like a very high degree and reduce it into these um, smaller linear factors. Now, keep in mind, I haven't shown you how to do that. That's kind of something for you to learn about next year if you do, um, if you do grade 11 advanced and grade 12 advanced, then you'll actually learn how to take a big, huge polynomial and reduce it into linear factors. Um, so basically, um, yeah, like taking taking a huge polynomial and finding all of its factors. Now let me go back down to where we are today. Um, so I was saying that, I would say that these irreducible quadratics are just as important as linear functions. And this is why. This is why. So we have a very important theorem called the, uh, what is it called? The polynomial, polynomial factor theorem. Okay, the polynomial factor theorem. Now, um, now I'm gonna be showing you this polynomial factor theorem and um, it's okay if you don't understand this all at once. Like it's a very deep theorem and in order to fully understand it, you, you do need to spend a little bit of time with, with um, you know, uh, algebra and, and, and that sort of thing. But I want to show you this theorem because there's a, a particular question that I would like to ask you on this, this next assignment that I've been talking about. Um, and it's, it's kind of a constructive type of question. I want you to construct something um, based on this theorem. So the polynomial factor theorem says that any polynomial, can be reduced, B, come on, 
be reduced. Reduce, come on. Reduce. Uh, Any polynomial can be reduced, or in other words, factored into a product of uh, linear factors and possibly one irreducible quadratic. Okay. So basically what that's saying is that um, I should actually just say and irreducible quadratics. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'll just say that just to make it a little more simple. Okay. So let's let's uh, let's talk about what this actually means. So so we've got a polynomial. It can be reduced, in other words, factored into a product of linear factors and possibly irreducible quadratics. Hmm. So what are we talking about there? What does that mean? Well, um, what that means is that um, well, if we if we go back over here, right? If we look at this factor theorem, it's saying that a polynomial, um, so basically the, uh, this is saying like the polynomial crosses the x-axis. That's what this really means over here. That, that if, so th this means that it crosses the x-axis when, when x is equal to c, right? So in other words, like if we have a polynomial like that, then then this point right here is where x is equal to c, right? That's what that, that f of c equals zero means. And that happens if and only if x minus c is a factor of f of x, right? So when we like when we factor these quadratics, that's what those x um, those uh, x intercepts correspond to, is those linear factors. Well, what this is saying is, well, maybe you'll have a, a, a degree you know, a, a very high degree polynomial that looks something like this, but maybe it doesn't, doesn't cross the x-axis at all. And what that means is that all of these, so this would factor into irreducible, it would factor into irreducible uh, quadratics, quadratics. Okay, so here's here's kind of an idea of, of what I'd like to ask on our on our final assignment on our last assignment. So, um, so yeah, this guy factors into irreducible quadratics, and that's because uh, there are no x intercepts, no x intercepts, which means that yeah, there's no way that it could it could uh, have a linear factor as a as a um, yeah as a factor okay so I want to provide an example of a degree degree 5 polynomial with only one x-intercept. Hmm, interesting. Um, so let's talk about how we would go about doing this. So I've got it, I, I'm, I'm looking for a degree five polynomial with only one x-intercept. And I should say degree five polynomial function, just to be, just to be explicitly clear that I'm talking about a function here, okay? So let's just think about, about what this is gonna look like, okay? Okay, so remember that it's a degree five polynomial, which is odd, which means that we're gonna have something like this, right? Either one end goes down, the other end goes up, or the other way around, you know, we'll have some funny business in the middle, but 
uh, so it's going to be one of these. So one of these. Okay. Now, uh, I would not start by thinking about the graph and thinking about like where where this is going to go because that's going to be really difficult. What I would do is I would start with algebra. Okay. So if there's only one, if there's only one x intercept, that's this is this is what that means. So one x intercept, one x intercept. This means that there is one linear factor. All others are irreducible quadratics. Hmm. Imagine that. All of the others are irreducible quadratics. Okay. So let's think about what that means. Let's think about what that means. So what I'm going to have is I'm going to have, you know, x minus c. So that's going to be my linear factor. Okay, and let's think about how we can get the, 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 the degree up from, you know, this is degree degree one, right? The, a linear factor is just a degree one polynomial. How do I bring this up to degree five without actually introducing more x-intercepts? Well, what I would do is I would introduce one irreducible quadratic, okay? So there is uh, you know, degree two. So this is a degree two. So the way these polynomials work is that as you multiply them together, the based on you know the the exponent laws that we know and love, if I multiply a degree one polynomial and I multiply it with a degree two polynomial, I will add those two degrees up, and that's what the the new degree is. So that right now, if I have a linear factor multiplied by a irreducible quadratic, that gives me a degree three polynomial. So let's do it one more time. Oops, I want my marker. There we go. So let's get another irreducible quadratic. That is it going to be degree two. And then now this polyn this polynomial that that I'm I'm trying to construct will have uh, a, a degree five. Okay, so now I've 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 figured out how I would get a degree five polynomial with only one x-intercept. Hmm. What now? What do I do now? Well, what is an irreducible quadratic? We haven't even looked at that, right? What is like how do you get an irreducible quadratic? Well, there are several ways of doing it. Um, I mean, really, just what, what, like, let's think about, like, how do we find an irreducible quadratic? Well, let's just think about what an irreducible quadratic looks like, right? So here's, here's an irreducible quadratic. It has no x-intercepts. Let's say that this is the function x squared plus 1. There's an irreducible quadratic. Let's find another one. Here's one that's that's x squared plus 2. Like, it's not that hard to find them. Um, there's an infinite number of them, right? These two are, are very easy to find. We could also have something like x squared plus 2x plus 1, right? There's a lot of other ones as well. I think that these are the, the easiest ones to find, though, just x squared plus something else, right? I think that, that that's probably the easiest way to find these irreducible quadratics. So I found two irreducible quadratics. A linear factor is easy to find. So let's just multiply these together. So let's do, I don't know, how about x minus 1? So there's my linear factor. I'll write LF for linear factor. And then I've got x squared plus 1. Here is my irreducible quadratic. And then here's another one, x squared plus 2. There's my other irreducible quadratic. Cool. Now, let's, uh, let's put this all together. 
and let's actually multiply these things out and see what I get. So I'm going to I'm going to multiply them out using the distributive property. I'm going to start off with these two. So this is going to be uh, what will be x minus 1 times. Well, I've got x squared times x squared, which is x to the 4. I've got x squared times 2, which is plus 2x squared. I've got x squared. Uh, oh, no, I already did that. Uh, oops. And I've got 1 times x squared, which is x squared. And finally, I have 1 times 2, which is 2. Okay. Now I use the, the distributive property again. So I've got x times x to the 4, which is x to the 5. See, it is a degree 5 polynomial. I've got x times, well, actually, I should, I should clean this up a little bit before I multiply it out. So 2x squared plus x squared is 3x squared, just to make things easier for ourselves. Okay, so that looks good. I've got x to the 5, and now I've got x times 3x squared, which is 3x to the 3. I have x times 2, which is 2x, plus 2x. Okay, now I've got negative 1 times x to the 4, which is negative x to the 4. I have negative 1 times 3x squared, so that is minus 3x squared. And then finally, I've got negative 1 times 2, which is negative, oops, negative 2, oops. Come on, negative 2, okay. And let's clean this up, and then let's see what happens when we plug this into Desmos. So I've got x to the 5 minus x to the 4 plus x plus 3x to the 3, 3x to the 3, um, minus 3x squared minus 2. Awesome. So this is this is the polynomial that I got. So let's let's name it. Let's call it f of x. And this is my my big huge polynomial. It's a degree 5 polynomial. Imagine that. We just constructed a degree 5 polynomial. And we already know something about what its graph looks like. We know that it has exactly one x-intercept, and its x-intercept is at, um, well, we know that f of 1 is going to be equal to 0. So it has an x-intercept at x equals 1. Okay, let's graph this, uh, this bad boy and see what happens. So I'm going to do this. And, okay, I'm going to have to share my keyboard again. Oops, wrong, wrong cord. There we go. Excuse me while I just uh, tap in. Okay, so here is my polynomial. Let's see if I did all the algebra right. It's possible that I made a mistake in the algebra somewhere, but I'm pretty sure we're good. So I've got x. Come on. Yeah, here we go. X, so I've got x to the 5 minus x to the, come on, minus x to the 4. So you can see already, like we have several x-intercepts. So there, I, I already have two x-intercepts. So I'm hoping that as we continue to construct this thing, um, oh, you can't even see that. Hold on a second. Um, let me try that. I'm going to put it over here. So I've got x to the 5 minus x to the 4. Plus, no, plus, where are we, 3x to the 3, <clears throat> minus 3x squared, minus 2. Ha, ah, look at that. Isn't that cool? So there is our uh, degree 5 polynomial that has only one x-intercept. Imagine that. Imagine that. Isn't that cool? So that's, that's kind of the gist of, of today's class, was just to take a look at um, these irreducible quadratics and just noticing that when, when you have like a degree 5 polynomial that only has one x-intercept, what that means is that the other factors are irreducible quadratics. And that's the only way that that works, is that these irreducible quadratics, uh, like those quadratics that don't function or that don't factor, Anytime that you have like a negative discriminant, 
those are like really important factors. They're almost, in a lot of ways, you can kind of think of them as prime numbers, like prime numbers in the polynomial world, right? Like they don't have any factors. They're just as important as the linear factors, right? So that's that's kind of the, the, the big abstract idea of the day. And it's it's this is probably one of the more uh, like esoteric ideas of this class. And that's, I thought that, that this would be kind of a, a nice place to end. Um, and I'm, I'm not trying to say that this is like, uh, you know, uh, an easy topic or anything like that. This is this is very abstract and I, I'm, I'm aware of that. And if, if you don't quite understand this quite yet, that's fine. Um, I'm going to ask just one question about this on our on our next and last assignment. Um, like I said, this next assignment will be very short. Um, it's not going to, to, oh, what happened to the 2x? Did I forget the 2x? I did. Okay, um, let's throw it in there. Let's make sure that, so plus 2x. There we go. Okay, so yeah, it's still, still only have one x intercept. Good catch though. Um, I forgot the, the 2x there, absolutely. Um, yeesh. Did I forget anything else? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six terms here. One, two, three, four, five. So I'll just write this plus two x minus two. There we go. Good catch though. You're paying attention. Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, so yeah. That's that's the big idea of the day is is to take a look at these irreducible quadratics and um, and and kind of you know play with them and and see how they they interact with in, like in the big world of, of polynomials. Um, by the way, um, if if you if you're interested in this kind of thing and you like the way polynomials work, um, in university look for an algebra class. Um, uh, I was just kind of re you know rereading this class this this book that I, I used for an algebra class that I took many years ago. Um, and in university, uh, like really investigating into these. Um, these uh, these polynomials and, and how they factor and and what the roots are like what what those x-intercepts are and what those mean right uh, that's that's what uh, um, that's what algebra is, is is really all about and and looking at um, you know the real numbers and the, and the rational numbers and saying okay yeah like this guy it it reduces into um, you know uh, the integers because we, we have an integer root um, that kind of thing uh, yeah, so, and, and yeah, and let, let's take a look at that as well. Look, we were even able, before we even started uh, to graph this thing, we already knew that it had an x-intercept at x equals 1. Like, who could have guessed that we could make this huge, massive, degree 5 polynomial? And not only were we able to say that there's one root, but we were able to determine that that root is right over here. Right, it's is right at this this point uh, x equals one, and I mean I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty cool that that we were able to be that precise about it. Anyway, um, that's our lesson of the day. Um, I hope that you guys are doing well. Um, I also uh, want to just uh, point out that um, I'm hoping that the uh, the projects are going okay. I know that a few of you have asked for um, some some help finding a topic, which is great. Um, and uh, if if you still need help finding a topic, I'd be more than happy to help you out. Um, and I know that that some of you have actually started. Um, I, I saw a, a video yesterday of, of two of you guys and uh, uh, I was just blown away with what I saw. I think that that's just, you know, as a teacher, that, that's like the coolest thing when, when, when students really like you, you, you and you can visibly see that they're enjoying the material that, uh, that they've learned in the class. Um, it just makes me so happy. Um, so so I'm, I'm really excited about, about the project. Um, if you're feeling uh, like you're not really sure where to start or um, if, you, if you need some tips or anything like that, um, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'd, I'd really like to help you out. Um, also, you can, you can talk to each other as well. Um, 
I know that uh, like the, the, the two students who I was just talking about, they decided to work together. And I know that, that we didn't really talk about you know, group work or anything like that, but um, I'm open to it. So if, if you'd like, if you think that it would be better if you were to work with someone else to sort of combine your efforts, um, please do that. Um, just whatever it takes, right? I just, I just want, like the whole purpose of me doing this project and kind of pushing for it is, is just for you to have some enjoyment and just to enjoy the, the material that we have. And, uh, um, and, and I, I really think that, that you can do that. Um, I know that some of the topics are, are pretty, have been pretty challenging. They've been hard topics. This one about polynomials uh, is absolutely in, included in that. Um, but, uh, but I think a lot of the, the topics, um, are quite accessible and, um, I think, you know, are, are, are very, uh, capable of, of being sort of the backbone of, of something that you can enjoy and have fun with. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm not going to do an easy slip today. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to sort of submit however many, uh, viewers there were today. Um, I'm, I'm going to sort of cool it with the exit slips now. Um, so anyway, please, like I say, reach out if, uh, if you want uh, some help with the, with the project, turn to each other, ask each other for help, all that good stuff. Um, I, want, I want us to have some fun. I really hope that we can find a way to have fun with this project. So I hope you're well. Uh, I miss you terribly. Um, I was at school yesterday, by the way. I should just point out that uh, that school was... Uh, uh, you know, it was great to be back at school. Um, I wish that you guys could be there with me. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, not yet. I think we have to wait till next year. But uh, I'll talk to you guys on Thursday. Remember, we're, we're doing every second day now. Um, and uh, yeah, take care. I'm going to go. Bye-bye.